Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the response of a linear system to a sinusoidal input. So we are going to look at the response of a linear system to a sinusoid input. That is given x of n to a linear system of impulse response h of n we want to derive a simplified expression for y of n here x of n is a sinusoid that is it has the following structure a times cosine of omega naught n plus the phase theta naught the initial phase theta naught now by definition the output of a linear system y of n can be defined as the convolution between h of n and x of n and by using the x of n as a sinusoid, the convolution becomes summation over k h of k multiplied by a times cos of omega naught multiplied by n minus k plus theta naught. And by using the definition of cos a as exponential of j a plus exponential of minus j a over 2. So by using this rule or by using this definition of cosine in terms of exponentials we can rewrite the summation as the convolution sum as summation over case h of k a times exponential of j times omega naught n minus k plus theta naught. And then we have plus exponential of minus j into omega naught n minus k plus theta naught and then we have 1 by 2 that is we can rewrite it as a by 2 now we can rearrange the terms such that the terms that are independent of k are separated from the summation over k that is we write a by 2 multiplied by for the first term we have exponential of j times omega naught n plus theta naught and then we have the summation over k that is summation over k h of k multiplied by exponential of minus j omega naught k and similarly for the second term we have plus exponential of minus j into omega naught n plus theta naught and then we have the sum over h of k multiplied by exponential of j omega naught k and this is equal to a by 2 multiplied by exponential of j times omega naught n plus theta naught and then this summation is basically dtft of h of k at omega naught. Then we have h of e power j omega naught. That is the dtft of h of k at omega equal to omega naught. And similarly for the second term we have plus exponential of minus j into omega naught n plus theta naught multiplied by h of e power minus j omega naught that is omega naught is replaced by minus omega naught because this is the dtft of h of k where omega is replaced by minus omega and therefore the dtft is calculated at omega equal to omega minus omega naught and now this can be written as a by 2 multiplied by and now we can write this complex number h of e power j omega naught by using the following now we can rewrite this complex number h of e power j omega naught as a product of the magnitude of h of e power j omega naught multiplied by exponential of j into angle of h of e power j omega naught and then we have exponential of j omega naught n plus theta naught and similarly for the second term we have magnitude of h of e power 
minus j omega naught which is actually equal to the magnitude of exponential of j omega naught that is these two magnitudes are same and then we have exponential of minus the angle h of e power j omega naught this exponential basically means that the angle of h of e power minus j omega naught is inverse of the any two inverse of the angle of h of e power j omega naught because h of e power j omega naught is a conjugate of h of e power minus j omega naught. therefore the angles are have an opposite sign and then we have exponential of minus j omega naught n plus theta naught now clearly the first term and the second term are basically conjugates of each other because because the magnitudes are same and the angles are exactly opposite to each other so the summation can be rewritten as a by 2 multiplied by the magnitude h of e power j omega naught and then we have the real part of the complex exponential which is cosine of omega naught n plus theta naught plus the angle of the transfer function at omega naught And of course there is a 1 by 2 in the beginning so there should be a 2 here and since the sum of a complex number with its conjugate is 2 times the real value so there should be a, there should be a 2 in the beginning so these two cancels with the 2 in the denominator and therefore y of n should be equal to a times a times the magnitude h of e power j omega naught multiplied by cosine of omega naught n plus theta naught plus the angle h of e power j omega naught therefore when, a, when the input is a sinusoid the output y of n is equal to the product of the magnitude of the transfer function h of e power j omega naught that is transfer function at omega naught and then the then we have cosine of the input phase plus the angle of the transfer function h of e power j omega naught now when the input x of n is equal to a linear combination of multiple sinusoids that is am multiplied by cos of omega m n plus theta m that is when the input is a linear combination of multiple sinusoids of different frequencies then the output also has a structure that is similar to the case when we have a single sinusoid that is summation or m's of am multiplied by the magnitude of the transfer function at the nth frequency multiplied by cos of omega m n plus theta m plus the angle h of e power j omega m so y of n is also a linear combination of the weighted sinusoids and the magnitude is changed by multiplying with the magnitude of the transfer function and the phase is changed by adding the phase of the corresponding transfer function at omega equal to omega m thus for a sinusoid input the output y of n is basically given by the magnitude of the transfer function multiplied by the input sinusoid where the phase is changed by the angle of the transfer function thanks for watching